You know, it's always exciting to get a brand new boat and look at all the different features that are, uh, that are on them. And this is my Ranger Boats Z521L. And this boat is, it's, I mean, it is the premier model of boats, I believe, on the market today for so many reasons. And there are so many things that you can do to this boat to even take it to other levels. And what I'd like to do is kind of show you how I've set my boat up to get the maximum use out of it, both for entertainment and fun with the family, but as well for a tournament angler. It starts at the back end and we'll work our way forward. I mean, I've got a Yamaha show on here. It's a, a high performance engine, gets great mileage, incredible hole shots, pushes this boat around just like a dream. I've been running Yamahas for two decades now and absolutely love everything about them from the little motors all the way to the big motors. And it's what pushes me around the lake and gets me from spot to spot without having to worry about any other issues. I mean, reliability, that's what that motor is all about. I actually rigged mine on an Atlas hydraulic jack plate. You know, the Atlas hydraulic jack plate by TH Marine, I mean, that's a family of, of products that have been around a long time, designed to be able to handle the, the energy and output and, and provide performance that we have when we're dealing with this particular motor as well as many others. I, I run the same jack plates even on my little aluminum boat. Then we got the power pole anchoring system. I've got a pair of blades here and, and you know, power pole has been around for a long, long time now. I first used them on saltwater boats a long time ago. They screwed down into the ground, held you there. And now we've got fast, high performing two of them on our boats here. You can get 12 foot deep models all the way to uh, shorter models. And they're gonna allow you to anchor and hold your boat in place. Whether you're unloading at the boat ramp, whether you're pulling up for a way in or setting up on a fishing spot and don't wanna have to worry about moving. I mean. You basically don't see a top end bass boat anymore without a pair of uh, twin power poles on there. And the reason is they perform every time. Now, when you start going up in the boat and you get onto this back deck, I mean, this is where a lot of people spend a, a ton of their time. I mean, whether you're a co-angler or a family member sitting back here and fishing, uh, this is this is your playground back here. And you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of accessories here built into this boat. And this, and this compartment right here is basically where all the batteries are at, where your wiring, where your bilge, where your live well pumps, everything's coming right in there in that one particular spot. Uh, I've got a four bank charger set up on mine. I'm running Cabela's batteries in here that power all of the, the accessories that I have from my electronics to my USB ports that we've got rigged on the boat and, and anything and everything that you can imagine uh, to include my power pole pumps. And also I have some of my transducers mounted right in the bottom of this. Some of my uh, traditional transducers are right in the bottom. They're gonna tell the Garmin uh, my depth at high speeds while I'm running as well as when I'm idling along. Going up a little further, I mean, you've got options on whatever type of a seat that you wanna put back here for comfort or take it out with ease. You've got two large storage areas. I kinda like how when you get in there, they've even got a little tray to put some stuff off to the side. Uh, that makes them for easy access. I generally will have like my life jackets back here. I'll have a fire extinguisher a lot of times back here. Uh, tools, I'll have rainwear. Uh, and then the other side I, I set up for guests, whether it's the camera guys with all their gear that they've got or somebody going fishing with me. In between those two are the live wells and the Ranger live well systems. I mean, they're, they're legendary. I mean, Forest Wood and the family kind of created, in my opinion, the original uh, live wells years ago and they've continued to, as as many others have to advance those. Uh, we've got oxygenated air systems in there which create micro bubbles. We've got a great recirculating set of pi uh, pumps in there. We've got a divider from a tournament scenario. You're basically looking at a live well setup that is designed to be able to handle any type of tournament fishermen as well as put you know fill it up with crappie or other game species for those of you that are uh, getting ready for a fish fry. As you move up into the cockpit area here, you've got well-designed seats that are, I mean, as comfortable as you're gonna get. Uh, I actually have two seats in mind. You've got other options that you can configure in here and, and they're designed for me and, and somebody to be able to sit in there comfortably for long rides, short rides, whatever we may be doing. And then in between them, we have what I call the coin box. We've got a couple of drink holders there. We've got dry, secure storage in there for, for where I, a lot of times I'll put my phones, I'll put, uh, 
electronics that we might have, little cameras or my, my paperwork at times, whatever it may be for the boat in there. And it also makes a great step for people coming to and from the boat as, as they're getting in and out of it. When you move over to the driver's uh, console here, you're basically looking at a space where you're going to spend a lot of time when you're running this boat. You're going to, you know, for long-legged or short-legged people, you can adjust your hot foot, you can move things around to make it nice and comfortable. You've got a, a touch pad uh, system down here for turning on and off your live wells, operating your horns, your lights, whatever it may be, fans. I mean, all of it's right there at your, at your fingertips. So when you're running or you're just sitting there, it's very easy to turn all those accessories on and off. And as you go down a little further, you see a couple of 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter type plugs where you can plug in uh, all the accessories, whether you're charging a phone or whatever it may be. Uh, all your throttle controls are right here. And of course, a very important kill switch. That's something everybody should have hooked up anytime that big motor's running. I mean, with no question about it, there's no reason never to be hooked up. And in fact, it's even law in places like Texas now to make sure that uh, you are buttoned up and have a kill switch on at all times. When you get to the console itself right here, uh, man, you've got so many options and opportunities here. I actually run a single 16 inch Garmin on mine and I'm using a precision sonar uh, base for mine where you basically, I'm taking the, the existing uh, platform that's in there and mounting this on there. You can also flush mount exactly into those as well. You can put other dual mounts here. You can put other mounts over here. You can set it up any way that you want. I just personally pref uh, prefer this mount like that. And then of course we've got gauges here to give us our fuel, our RPM output, and everything else. And then I actually have twin levers right here uh, to help control my trim and my jack plate when I'm running and, and navigating in rough water. That way I can keep both hands right there on the steering wheel and just use a finger below to raise and lower as I need to be able to ensure control and stability in my boat when I'm operating in rough conditions or even just taking off out of the hole. When you go to the passenger side, you also notice where they've got an ample position or opportunity to be able to put rods in there, to store a lot of different rods and strap them down. They've got their own uh, little storage area as well. And of course, you've got a glove box right there. Some people like a single console. Some people like a dual console. A lot of times you'll find your hardcore tournament anglers preferring the, the single console. I like to take care of my wife a little bit and the camera guys and some of the guests give them a console for those long rides that were going on. So that's how I always rig my boat. As you get up a little further in this boat, you're getting to the, the place that I call, this is my office. This is where I'm gonna spend all my time at. Uh, you've got a step, which is also some additional storage right here to come up past where you can store tools. And then you've got the configuration uh, on this particular boat that, that you see that I use for all my storage. This particular box right here, a lot of times I'll have extra tackle. This one right here, you can you can put rods in, you can do whatever you want to. You can basically configure all of these in any manner that you like. Me personally, what I've begun doing recently is I put all my tackle in the center uh, storage area. And I've gotten really fond of the Bass Mafia boxes uh, in the last few years. I mean, it, it just seems to be very durable. I can put a ton of gear in there. The moisture doesn't seem to be an issue with them. And, and you'll see those a lot of times for my key baits in the middle. And then I'll have some little Plano uh, clear-sided ones on the side for various baits and accessories that I want and I just take things in and out as I as I go on fishing trips. The far side over there is, is where I've been storing a lot of my rods and as, as you can see I got a lot of them in there because half the time I never know what bait I want to use so I got to have a lot of fishing rods. Then I've got a cooler back a little bit further where I'll uh, you know my sodas, my water, snacks, whatever we're going to be going to be needing in there and, and I can put a bag of ice in there on a hot day with, with everything and it, it keeps it everything nice and fresh and cool for the entire day. Now as we get to the next step, this is where I'm gonna be fishing at because I'm gonna keep my, my buddy back here behind me so I get first shot at everything. So the front deck up here on the bow, um, man, it, they just come so far in recent years when I look at them and, and how we have adjusted ours. Let's start with that Garmin Force trolling motor, brand new on the market right now. Uh, there are so many advantages to that trolling motor. We're going to spend a lot of time showing and, and sharing information on that in the near future. But you're basically looking at a unit, in my opinion, that's the quietest, most powerful trolling motor on the market right now. 
and it also is integrated in with all of your electronics. And by integrating everything in to communicate together to include built-in transducers for certain applications, you're eliminating a lot of noise. And when I'm talking to pros right now, literally was talking to Creed on the phone just this morning, he said it's the best, best screen visions and, and views I've ever had. There's no interference. And that's because everything is communicating and working together uh, with the Trello motor and your electronics now. But back to the force itself, you're, you're looking at a, a, a model that has a great warranty. It, it virtually takes no effort to lift and control this out of the water. How many times as fishermen are you holding it up to clear a log or something? And I can remember past trolling motors, I mean, my arms just, you know, shaking, they're so heavy with this. It's just lighter and more powerful, more maneuverable and, and responsive. And a lot of that is based on the, the, the foot pedal and how it works. I mean, you can do it hardwired, you can do it wirelessly for all the different controls there. And it's, it's just got all the features that you could ever dream of. If, I mean, if you could build a, a, a trolling motor in your mind, as a fisherman, that's what Garmin did, and they, they took the time to roll out this product and make sure it was right. When you get over to the side, you start looking at my electronics. Um, the, the way I like to rig mine, I like two units up front for a couple different reasons, and, and what I've chosen, and there's a lot of ways that people can mount electronics, but I've chosen to use a mount that gives me two pieces of electronics stacked top to bottom. Number one, if you look at the first unit right here, you're always gonna find live scope on my boat. I'm 100% addicted to that. If they had to take all my electronics away, I would fight and that'd be the one I'd pick up and run while the thieves got the rest of them because I'd want live scope right there. So it is the one thing I always have dedicated by itself. And that's on my top uh, unit right here. When I go down to my next unit, I've got a combo set up there and we're gonna talk about combos as well in the future where I like a, a map to where I can look at the waypoints, I can look at the contour lines, I can get a feel for what's going on. And then I'll have a small section off to the side with traditional and, and typically clear uh, view below that so that I can see those. And it's all at a moment's notice. I can just quickly glance down and I can see what I'm doing. But most of my focus, honestly, is, is still to this day on live. It just tells me where everything is. I can see my baits, I can see targets. I can be like an eagle sitting up on a tree trying to find something as a predator. I can swing left, swing right, there it is make a cast to it and hopefully catch a fish. So that's a quick down and dirty of my Ranger Boats 521L. Hopefully you enjoyed it, gave you some ideas on how you'd like to set up a boat like this. And you know, for you wives out there, I guarantee your husband would love to find one of these as a gift uh, when he came home for work at any time.